Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a tool, or really two tools, one called VJoy and one called UJR or Universal Joystick Remapper. Now I first came across these tools when trying to get an old game running on my Windows 8 PC, specifically the game Roll Cage. Now Roll Cage actually works pretty well for such an old game. It loads fine, plays fine, runs fast. The only problem is when I tried to configure the Xbox 360 controller to work with the game, all the axes were messed up. So left and right were up and down and things like that, and it was generally a mess. So let's have a quick history lesson. I've got Xpadder open here, which I've talked a lot about on my website, and we can see the picture of the popular Xbox 360 controller. Now this is the controller most of us use for the non-keyboard and mouse games on the PC. So basically any platform games or racing games if you don't have a racing wheel, maybe even first person shooters if you're just kicking back playing from the couch and not really playing competitively. Anyway, before the 360 controller came along there was, well, everything. There was no standard PC gamepad or joystick. Everyone used what they preferred, which in a way is great, but it means that configuring controllers in older games can be kind of hit and miss. If the developers preferred a joystick, for instance, and you have a gamepad, things don't always match up very well. Now, Xpadder here solves a lot of problems. It's designed to emulate the keyboard on the joypad. That's great if your game just has keyboard inputs, because then you can use a pad, but sometimes that's not what you need to do. You need, in many instances, to remap gamepad controls on the gamepad. By that I mean switch an axis here or there, or reverse one here or there. Now you can do this if you know how, and the first piece of the puzzle is this program here, VJoy. So you're going to want to download and install this program, which you can do from this site and just by clicking this link here. Of course, I'll have the download link in the notes too. So I've already installed this program and I'm going to go ahead and start the configure VJoy oops, tool like this. And that did pop up a UAC window, but you don't see that on the screen recorder. Okay, so that's the configure VJoy window. So what we're going to do here is create a virtual joystick. So let's say we wanted to stick with X and Y axis. So that could be a left analog stick. If we were thinking in terms of a real controller, the Z axis here could be these analog triggers. And we can add various other components too. Over here there's a hat switch. Now if this was a gamepad that would be the D-pad here. So you can select four directions here and you will add a D-pad. You can also add as many buttons as you like. All the way up to 32. I think 8 will be enough. Now down here on target device I recommend you change this up to at least device number two and make sure action down here is set to configure and then click on apply. Right, so let me show you what happened. If I open up USB game controllers, I'm actually on a Windows 8 machine here just with a start menu replacement. If I open that up, Okay, you can actually see two VJoy devices now. Now one's one I configured earlier and one is the one we've just configured. So let me click on properties for that. And as you can see, we've got the eight buttons and the axes that we set up before. And we haven't actually got a D-pad because I've done that wrong and I should have put that to one, but it um, doesn't matter for this example. Right, so what we want to do next is actually test that this is working. So what we do to do that is use the VJoy Feeder program. Which I'll start up now. I'm 
Okay, so my feeder app has found the device on number two. If everything's working correctly, these axes should be available. If everything here is greyed out, you may need to close this program, go back to the VJoy configuration window and set up another device on a higher target device number. Um, if I go to the device number 8 that I set up earlier, that one's working just fine. Now I have been in touch with the VJoy author about why this happens and he is looking into it. So for now, if things don't work, just try a higher target device. Right, so with the feeder application, we can actually move the virtual joystick just to see if it's working or not. Um, I'll cancel that one there and oh no, wait a minute, sorry, that's probably the right one. So if I move these controls here, go back to here, oh, that's not working. Okay, let's try the other device. Okay. Ah, there we go. So if I move this axis here, click back on here, we can see the joysticks moved. And if I press a few buttons, click back on here, we can see the buttons have activated too. Okay, so we know that device 8 here is working. Um, if you need to remove a device from VJoy, you can do that easily too. So let me remove target device 2. And to do that, I just select 2 here, click on delete device, and click on apply. Okay, so now we can see it's as if we've just unplugged that device. And if I go into the properties for this device... I can move it thus. Right, so now we have one virtual device here, which is set to device number eight, and we have the real joypad. Oops, sorry. The real joypad here, which is a secondary device. So we now have a virtual joystick set up, but that's not terribly useful on its own. What we need to do is map controls from our real game controller here onto the VJoy device here. And that's what we'll do in the next video.